So we've been coloring all of the features in an individual shape file the same color. Suppose now you want to color individual shapes within a shape file depending on some particular value associated with that shape. Um, for example, suppose we want to uh, color this map um, with all the states having a different color rather than the same color. We can do that. Let's start by turning off the cities and rivers layers um, so to get a better view of the states. You click on the checkbox next to cities, they'll disappear. And if you click on the um, checkbox next to rivers, they disappear. The data is still loaded in, it's just not being displayed. So if we click on it again, they'll appear. So for states, let us go to the uh, coloring scheme box under the legend editor and click on that and open it up. And we're going to choose a field to color by in the shapefile attribute table. And let's choose state name. And then for the actual way we'll color it, let's click on a little lightning bolt up up here and we'll choose unique values. And that will assign a unique color to every single um, state depending on the name. And if we click on apply, move this off to the side, you'll see every state now has its own individual color. And you can modify those by clicking on a color. For example, in California, it's a dark blue. If we click on that and choose, uh, say, white, click OK and click apply. And now California is a white color. Now that's fine, but suppose you want to color it now not by a unique value, but rather color it depending on the value of one of the attributes, um, a numeric value. For example, suppose you want to color it a different shade of green depending on how heavily populated the state is. That's a, a kind of map called a chloropleth. Let's go back to the coloring scheme. And instead of coloring by the state name, let's choose the 1997 population as the field. And then let's choose continuous ramp. And what that'll do is, starting with the lowest populated state, those will be uh, colored in white. And then the highest populated states will be colored in green. And we can also choose the number of breaks, the number of different shades of green that are used to color the map with uh, the number of breaks here. Let's just choose 10. Click on OK, and then click on Apply. Move that off to the side now, and now you can see that depending on what the population of the state is, it's uh, shaded green. Uh, California is the most heavily populated state, so it's a dark green, and then Texas and New York next, and then moving on, and then lots of the Great Plains states have the lowest population. If you look down at the bottom of the coloring scheme editor, you'll see a little um, basic bar graph that shows how many of the state values fall within each of the color ranges. You can use that to adjust the, the color ranges. And you can also modify the plotting values by clicking in the boxes up here for values and text and modifying the actual divisions manually rather than you know, going with the automatic divisions that the, uh, the, the program has given you. You can also color a, or change a parameter by um, a unique or a, a, a set of break values. Let's go and take a look at uh, crop acreage in 1987 and choose um, equal breaks. That's the, that's the word I was looking for. We'll stick with 10 breaks for now. And now, once again, it basically breaks it up into different um, ranges of acreage. But rather than using a continuous grade of colors, it assigns unique values to each of those particular scales. And then once again, there's also a, um, a bar graph that shows how many of those values fall within each of those colors. Click on Apply. And now you have a plot of um, the um, crop acreage depending on color. If we go over to the side here and click a little plus box. Oops, let's close the coloring scheme, click on OK. Click on the plus box on the side. And there's the legend that shows basically which color corresponds to um, you know, which set of um, uh, crop acreages. If we drag this over a little ways, you'll see it's got the full ranges plotted out there.